The Love Affair event is on at Whole Foods Market with deals on delicious desires through February 14th. The floral department's in full bloom, so look for savings on double dozen bunches of roses. In the meat and seafood departments, save on animal welfare certified New York strip steaks and sustainable wild-caught lobster tails to make the night sizzle. Gifts from the wellness and beauty department are always a nice touch. And you have to grab those chocolate-dipped strawberries. Make Whole Foods Market your Valentine's Day destination. How do you feel great on vacation? Like really good? Easy. You go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great. You'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2622, Money Lessons from Spinning Class, by Vicki Cook of womenwhomoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Money Lessons from Spinning Class, by Vicki Cook of womenwhomoney.com. The sun is setting a little earlier each night and there's a hint of fall in the air, but I'm squeezing every minute out of summer that I can. And one of the new activities I've really enjoyed recently is spinning. Spinning is a group cycling exercise class. I started spinning at my local YMCA at the suggestion of a friend, and now I'm hooked. After months of attending spinning at least four to five times a week, I thought I'd share some takeaways connecting personal finance and my summer fitness routine. Five money lessons from a summer of spinning. Number one, spending money on a gym membership is totally worth it if you use it. It's tough to see money leave your account each month when you can probably figure out ways to exercise for free. But spending money on yourself and your wellness matters too. This can be a real issue if you're a saver. If you enjoy working out at a gym and it motivates you to stay fit, try to make it a line item in your budget. Being proactive with your health will hopefully save you more money down the road too. Number two, if you spend your days at home, going to the gym gets you out around other people. As a teacher and school administrator, I was used to being around more than a thousand people every day. Now that I'm semi-retired and have an online business, I spend most of my day at home. Whether you work from home or a stay-at-home parent are retired or run a business from home, days can get long and lonely. This is especially true if you're an extrovert. At spinning, we laugh and sing as we ride. We even celebrated a woman's 80th birthday. Yes, 80 years old and you'd never know it. You can meet new friends at the gym or maybe even find new mentors or customers. Meeting your social needs is very important to your health and your finances. Loneliness can be costly to your physical and emotional health and to your bank account. Number three. Put first things first to get things done. Putting systems in place and building good habits has helped me to achieve many personal, professional, and financial goals. But just like you, I often have many things competing for my attention. So I've tried to use what I learned from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits for Highly Effective People to put first things first. And this summer, I put my health and wellness first, and it's worked. I get up and head to the Y first thing in the morning. Then I have the rest of the day to do whatever I want and need to get done. In the past, I'd put my family or work first. And while they were both important, I'm important too. Whatever it is you're focusing on, put it first and it's more likely to get done. If applying for a new job or starting a new business is important to you, put that goal first and devote time to getting it done. Number four, being coached is a really smart move. I started as a competitive athlete when I was six years old. After being coached for 16 years, I took over and started coaching others at 22. 30 years later, I still enjoy coaching others, not just in sports, but in life too. But I've been in the habit of working out alone for years, and I realize what a big mistake it's been. I work out a lot harder in a much shorter period of time when I have a coach leading the workout. I also see more results. Following a coach's lead saves me time and mental energy that I can devote to my family, business, and other goals. Even if you feel confident about managing your health, career, or finances, 
don't discount how much a coach can help. New ideas and a different perspective can move the needle from good to great on whatever you're working on. And five, set the bar high and only lower it if you need to. Are you guilty of setting safe goals because you lack confidence or don't wanna fail? I know I'm guilty of that. While I'm mostly happy with the success I've had in life, I'm also too conservative at times. So instead of holding back in my spinning workouts to finish strong, okay, so I'd just be able to finish at first, I shifted my mindset to starting strong instead. If I had to slow down or stop towards the end, fine but I wasn't going to finish a ride and wish I worked out harder. Do you skip applying for jobs you aren't sure you're qualified for? Are you afraid to negotiate a starting salary or raise? Or do you save money instead of invest? Start strong, set the bar high, and you'll end up further ahead. As Norman Vincent Peale said, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Final thoughts on a summer of spinning. I really enjoyed the months of spinning class because I'm working out harder, meeting people, and having fun. My YMCA membership is definitely worth the cost to me, but I do need to make sure I try some different classes to keep learning and growing. Building habits and automating parts of your life is helpful, but revisiting your goals and taking action is the key to continue making forward progress. You just listened to the post titled, Money Lessons from Spinning Class by Vicki Cook of womenwhomoney.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. The Love Affair event is on at Whole Foods Market with deals on delicious desires through February 14th. The floral department's in full bloom. So look for savings on double dozen bunches of roses. In the meat and seafood departments, save on animal welfare certified New York strip steaks and sustainable wild caught lobster tails to make the night sizzle. Gifts from the wellness and beauty department are always a nice touch. And you have to grab those chocolate dipped strawberries. Make Whole Foods Market your Valentine's Day destination. This episode is brought to you by Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Want to advance your career or switch fields? An MBA from Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business can help. Earn your degree from a top-ranked business school with a thought-provoking curriculum, one-on-one leadership coaching, support from experienced career counselors, and full-time online hybrid and accelerated MBA formats. Join the intelligent future. Visit cmu.edu slash Tepper to learn more. Being good with money is not about never spending it. It's about spending it on the things that matter and getting an appropriate amount of value out of the money that you do spend. Finding efficiencies where you can, meaning finding ways to get the same benefit for less money, is also part of optimizing one's finances. So for example, I have a friend that used to go to a fancy gym that cost hundreds of dollars per month. She took a hard look at the value she was getting out of the membership and decided that she wasn't utilizing most of the benefits that justified that price tag. So she switched to a budget-friendly gym and has seen no reduction in happiness from that move. My exercise of choice is hot yoga. One way I've optimized this in the past is that I participated in a trade program. For two hours a week, I helped clean the studio in exchange for an unlimited monthly membership. The studio gets fully cleaned twice per day because they have a constant rotation of trades. And I found that cleaning something that was already clean was not a big deal at all. I was basically just hanging out and wiping down some surfaces. It was pretty fun and it had additional benefits aside from the cost savings. Because I took pride in the studio and had a sense of ownership there, I worked out way more often. And that should do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.